Hello everybody and welcome to the first Vegas Pro 16 tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to do motion tracking which is a new feature to Vegas Pro 16. In previous versions of Vegas Pro you could do motion trackings but you'd have to do it manually keyframe by keyframe. This new method allows it to be more automatic and a lot quicker than it used to be. I've already imported my media into Vegas Pro. If you don't know how to do that you can just click on the import media button here or you can drag and drop the file from wherever you've got it stored. I'm going to start by dragging my clip onto the timeline here. Looking at this video, you can see it's a video of my friend Kai. He's just walking along. Do it. No, I'll see. And basically, I want to track his face and I want to blur it out. So before I actually start tracking Kai's face, I want to create a new track. I'm just going to right click and click create new video track. I then want to duplicate this video track so it's on that track above. To do this, you want to hit U on your keyboard. This will split the audio and video so you can move them separately. And then you can duplicate the video track by clicking on it and press Ctrl C. And then clicking on this top track up here and pressing Ctrl V. So now you've got the same clip twice on top of each other. The reason I'm doing this is because the top track is going to be where the tracking occurs and it's going to do all the blurring effects. And then the bottom track is just going to be the rest of the kind of background, the rest of the scene. And I'm going to want the tracking to happen from when he's looking at the camera, which is here, to when he turns away, which is about here. So this top track, I'm just going to cut it there using the S button, and I'm going to delete this second bit. Now playing the clip, you won't be able to see any difference. But obviously down here we can see that the top track is a lot shorter than the bottom one. Bearing in mind guys, these options will depend on what you are editing and what your eventual goal is. This is just for an example to show how the video tracking works. So moving on to the actual video tracking itself, or the motion tracking should I say. You want to click on the video effects panel here. You want to have Bezier masking selected. And then you've got a few options here. It's up to you depending, like I said, on what your project is and what you want in a track. Because I'm wanting to track someone's face, I'm going to choose the circle option. Because, you know, her face is pretty circular. I'm going to just drag and drop that onto the top clip here. You'll then get this little box with a circle inside. This is basically what you're going to track. Now to make things a little easier here, I don't want to see the bottom track. I only want to see the top track when I'm doing this. So if you click on the top track and click X, it'll make the bottom track invisible and then you can see what you're tracking a little bit better. So once you've made it so you can only see the top track, you want to make sure this little cursor is at the beginning of the clip. And then you want to adjust this circle so it's over whatever you're tracking. In my case, it's Kai's face. So I've got it over his face there. And then using these corner dots, I can scale it so it's on his head more. Now, his head is a little bit longer than it is wide. So I'm going to use this yellow button. And I'm going to just kind of drag it up, scale it up a bit. And I'd say that's pretty good. That's about the size of his head. Now looking at this panel here on the left, if you hit mask 1, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see. So yeah, if you hit mask 1, you can see all the options for this mask. A lot of them are related to the scale again. So once you've actually moved it onto his head, you shouldn't need to mess around with the width and the height and the stuff like that. If you want to have another mess around with it, that's perfectly fine. If you prefer to use the sliders, you can use them. I personally prefer just using this little illustration thing on the preview window. Now, one of the options you do have on this menu is feather. What this basically does is when you slide that along... It's going to kind of blur the edges of the mask. You can either choose to have the feather go inwards, as you can see there, outwards, as you can see there, or both, which does it half the fade in, half the fade out. I'm going to choose both here. I'm, I'm going to have a really light fade. This is just so when I add the effect later on, the effect doesn't just suddenly stop. It kind of fades out. So once you've got your precision and your settings sorted, you want to click on tracking over here, and then you're going to hit start. This is going to automatically kind of process where the mask needs to be each frame. As you can see, it's added lots of keyframes for each frame of the video. Once it has done that, you can just close the window. And that should work. If you hit play now, do it. You can see that it does track his face. So now click in the top track again and hit an X. We can then see both tracks again. So if I play it, you won't be able to see any difference yet. That's because I haven't actually added any effect to the top track. So we're going to go on the video effects and we're going to look for pixelate. If you search up here, it's been a bit slow. So if you search up here for pixelate, as you can see it's here. 
These are the pixelation options. I'm just going to drag the default one onto the top track. And then I'm going to adjust the pixelation here. You may need to fiddle around with this a bit until you get it just how you want it. So there we go, that's really pixelated, you can't tell it's him. There we go, that's even better. So I'm going to close this now, and then if I hit play, do it. No, I'll see. You can see his face is pixelated the entire time he's looking at the camera until he looks away and it stops just when I want it to. Do it. No, I'll see. No. That is pretty much it for this tutorial. If you do have any problems or questions, just ask me in the comments below. I know this tutorial was a little bit harder to follow along with. I try to explain everything as good as I can, but if there is anything you are a bit stuck on, just ask me. I pretty much respond to comments straight away, unless I'm asleep, because, you know, sleep's important. <laughs> but on screen now, you should be able to see the final video, and it looks pretty good. It's worked well. I think this is a great new feature added into Vegas Pro 16, it's definitely going to be a lot of help. It's definitely a lot quicker than having to do the old method where you would manually track each keyframe yourself. But yeah, that's going to be it. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed, I hope this did help. Remember if you want more tutorials, subscribe, hit the like button, comment, all the support is appreciated. And check out my main channel, the link is on screen and in the description below. But yeah, that's it, so I'll see you later guys, bye.